Hello, this is Daniel from Sound Headquarters. This week we are building diffusers. Here's a sneak peek of the diffuser that we built for this client. And I will show you step by step how to do it yourself and how to install it as well. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to set up a stop block on our miter saw here. And the whole point of the stop block is to make each of our cuts consistent against each other. The diffuser is built out of four inch, three inch, two inch, and one inch blocks. And it's important that all of the fours are consistent, all of the threes, all of the twos, all of the ones, they're all the same as each other. That way when we glue up the diffuser and the pieces are next to each other, everything is completely consistent and there's no weird gaps or steps in between the blocks. So I'm just building this with two, the same two by two that I use for the diffuser. And you can see I just clamped one long piece to my fence so I can adjust it back and forth and I'm screwing in a smaller piece there to act as the second side of the stop block so I can cut two pieces at a time. And I'm just cutting that face so that the cut face of the two by two that I'm cutting lines up perfectly with the cut face of our stop block there. So just cranking it down on the clamp against the fence and just doing a test cut there and everything was all good. So I can go ahead and get all of these cut. And there's all of the fours cut right there. And I'm doing the same thing for the three inch blocks right now. So I'm just cutting one initial three inch block until it's at the clearance that I, that I like. And then I can just adjust the stop block with the cut three inch block up against the right side of the saw blade. And once that's set, I can do a couple test cuts and measure and check. And once that's good and repeatable, then we can go ahead and get all the threes cut. And in the description, I will leave the amounts that the dis this, um, this diffuser used. But I usually do one bucket of fours, one and a half bucket of threes, one full bucket of twos, and about half to three quarters of a bucket of one inch blocks. And it's always good to have extras because if there's any inconsistencies in the blocks or if there's like knots or, or just if some certain ones aren't lining up properly, it's always good to have extras. And these are the one inch blocks here. And just getting that last adjustment, setting up that stop block so that our one inch piece lines up against the right side of the saw blade. And then once it's all good, we can just keep repeating the cuts until we have all of our blocks done. Now, these are all of our blocks. You can see there I have about one bucket of each and then the three inches I have one and a half buckets. Now is the best part, my favorite part, the part that definitely does not suck and take a lot of time is the sanding. So I'm just sanding to remove the cut marks. So that way when we do glue up this diffuser, there's no burrs, there's no things sticking out, any splinters. And also so that the pieces can butt up very flush against each other. So this is an important step, very time consuming, um, but this is the attention to detail that really pays off in the end when you finally glue up your diffuser and build it. So just going ahead, getting all of these pieces sanded. And here is our backing panel. So this, this client, normally we do two by four feet and this client still wanted eight square feet of diffusion, but they wanted this size to kind of match a painting that they had in their room size wise, which was about 1.3 feet by six feet. And I found this project panel that already was that size. So it worked out perfect. I didn't have to buy a sheet of plywood and cut it to size. So you can see here, I have the pattern up on my computer. I will leave that in the description of the video. And I am just laying out the blocks and then just getting my glue set. And this first row is the most important row. This is what is going to square off and allow all the following rows to line up perfectly. So you can see I'm just rotating these blocks to orient the right way. One side is ever so slightly longer than the other. So I'm just spinning them to make sure that they all are facing the same direction. And then this part right here, I'm using a straight edge and a square. And it's very important that this very first line lines up perfectly with the outside face of our backing panel. You can see there, I'm just making sure that everything is all lined up. And I remove that first block because that one has no block. I just use a block in its place uh, so I can set the sizing right. Because when you look at the pattern, some spots have a zero, which means that there's no block glued into that spot. So just going ahead and getting the rest of the pattern glued up. 
and just using a square and a straight edge on both sides to make sure that everything stays nice and consistent. And this little lip, that little edge that's left over, we are going to trim away with the planer. And that's gonna make sure that we have a nice flush surface for us to build our frame around. It's very satisfying to see this come together. And there is the finished glued up diffuser. You can see that we have that lip on the top edge and on the right side. And we're going to use an electric planer to just plane that edge until it's flush with the blocks of the diffuser. So just setting the depth there on the planer to cut a lot of material. And you can see there, we just slowly keep planing and planing until we meet up with those blocks. Now you could flip this over and do this with a track saw or a circular saw. Um, I just like using the planer because the planer can, uh, can plane down some of the sides of the blocks as well if there are any little inconsistencies. And that just makes it so that we have a nice flat surface for our frame to butt up against. So you can see there, the whole diffuser is trimmed and planed up. Everything is nice and flat. And it is ready for us to start working on the frame. Now I build my frame with one by six. So I'm just measuring and drawing up the measurements here so that I know what we need to cut on our one by six. So you can see they're just getting the saw and the sawhorse set up. <clears throat> and I'm measuring the thickness of both of these boards put together because our top and our bottom pieces, the long pieces have to account for the three quarters of an inch just about that each of these boards is thick so that when we nail it all together, the interior dimension is the right size to snugly fit around the diffuser frame or around the diffuser itself. So you can see just mocking everything up here and I'm just using scrap pieces to make sure that everything lines up there and I can see how much of a gap I'll have to trim off to get that those top pieces to be the exact size that we need to encase the diffuser. Because basically we want just a tiny, tiny bit of wiggle room, like about a sixteenth of an inch to an eighth of an inch. The tighter we can make this and the tighter of a fit it is, the better. Because um, we just want like a nice snug fit on, on, on the diffuser. So now that I got that first piece cut to the right length, I'm going to just use it to match the other side. And those are our two long pieces. And now I can cut for the interior ones and I can just fit there and just go back and forth until I know that for sure everything is going to line up properly. And I want just ever so slightly these side pieces to be longer than the short side of the diffuser. This is gonna make sure we have that little 16th of an inch, eighth of an inch wiggle room uh, so that we can actually get the frame onto the diffuser. So here is what I use to nail this frame together. It is a 16 gauge finish nailer and I'm using, I believe three inch or two inch there just straight finish nails. And firstly, just to test fit the frame, I'm just getting two nails on each side of the frame, uh, just so that if we do have to take this apart and trim anything, it's not completely secured. Um, will save me some, uh, and you some pain in the behind. So just two nails there. And now that this is all built, we can test fit the frame. And as long as the frame fits nicely and snug, then we can remove it and put the rest of the nails inside so that the frame stays nice and secure. So there's our front face of the frame. And we want this to be super snug. If it's very, very loose and it goes on easy, there will be that gap visible once the diffuser is installed. So we want this to kind of require a little bit of, uh, a little bit of finesse to get onto the frame there, or to get onto the diffuser rather. So you can see there, just a little bit of hammering. And there we go, nice and snug fit. Perfect. 
So now that that is all set, we can remove the frame and I can finish the nailing just to make sure everything stays nice and secure. You can see I'm just using my square there to make sure that all of our nails are just in a consistent pattern, just visually. And there we go. So now the diffuser is ready for stain and the frame is ready for paint. This client chose to do a very dark ebony stain on the actual diffuser itself. I then we did white spray paint. <clears throat> white spray paint on the actual frame. And just doing any little sanding here on the edges to make sure that the paint goes on nicely and that there's no splinters or no burrs or anything on the frame. And there's the paint that we're using there, just a white Rusto. And this process is pretty straightforward, just painting. And I ended up doing two coats on here just to make sure everything was nice and consistent. And there we go. So here is the stain that we're using. And I'm just applying this with a brush uh, to get into all of the corners of the diffuser here. Um, so what we did <clears throat> after we installed this diffuser was we went in with just a very tiny paintbrush and just visually looked to see if there was any tiny little spots that got missed or spots where maybe uh, the end grain soaked in a lot of the stain and it was a little bit lighter than the clients wanted. So we just went after the install and just went in with a very tiny brush just to make sure that any little spots that did not get complete coverage got filled in. And this is another time consuming process, um, but once again, very satisfying to watch uh, and see it all come together. So now we're gonna get building the mount for the diffuser. And the technique that we're using here is a French cleat, which is basically two 45 degree angle cuts that lock into each other. One side goes into the wall and one side goes into the diffuser. So I'm just using two by six here and you can see I'm just making a test cut on a scrap piece to make sure that everything's gonna line up halfway in between the two by six. And once that's all set, I can make my actual cut. So even though the diffuser is six feet long, I'm making this mount at four feet long because at four feet, we're hitting at least two studs in the wall. And as long as we're hitting two studs, structurally, this will be secure to hold the diffuser. So just using my fence and some pieces of wood there to make sure that this cut stays consistent along amongst the length of the cut. And there we go. There's our French cleat. And it's as simple as that. One side goes into the wall, one side goes into the diffuser. So here is the rear wall of this basement studio that we're gonna be treating. And there's that painting that we're going to be removing and the diffuser will be going in its place. So these clients wanted the diffuser to be centered to the window casing rather than centered to the rear wall. But with the French cleat, we do have that adjustability. We can slide it to the right or left um, to account for any variance uh, or if they do want to adjust it to sit center with the wall rather than center to the window casing Then the clients can do that So I'm just getting my marks I marked out the studs there on the wall and marked out the height of where we want the diffuser to sit So now I'm just getting my marks for where the top of the French cleat the French cleat that's going into the diffuser is going to sit So you can see I'm lining it up there with the center mark Right, and as long as that line is nice and level, and we install the French cleat onto the wall side level, then our diffuser should sit nice and level. So it's important that we pre-drill these screws because we do not want this French cleat to split. So we wanna make sure we pre-drill and we put in plenty of screws to make sure that this is nice and structurally sound. And we want this to be rock solid. It's quite a bit of weight. So you can see I'm just lining up the other French cleat, and I'm measuring from the bottom of the French cleat that's going to be on the wall to the top of the diffuser, and that's how I'm going to get my measurement right there for where the bottom of this French cleat that's going into the wall needs to line up. So once I have that measurement, I can use my level, and now that I have my center mark and my level mark on the bottom, and I can see where my studs are, we are ready 
to install the French cleat into the wall. So I'm just going to pre-drill and mark out some holes in the center of this French cleat. I'm going to mark up the center line so I can line it up on the wall. And then we will pre-drill some holes right where the studs are. And then once we get those two secured, I add in a few more. I believe we did three into each stud, which is plenty strong to hold this diffuser. So just using my pencil to mark out where the studs are, <clears throat> pre-drilling, and just setting the screw just a little bit into the holes there just to make it easier for me to drive <clears throat> into the studs with one hand. So once that first one is in, I use the level to make sure everything is nice and straight, and we can drive those in and just pre-drill and secure. And that's nice and rock solid. So here we go, we can wheel this in. There's one of the clients there, Jay, helping me install the diffuser here. And you can see there's some spots on the diffuser here that we have to go over with the paintbrush. Um, but we did that after the after the install was fully finished. <coughs> just going in and leveling. So there is the diffuser itself, and now we can just get the frame on. And you can see this required a little bit of finesse. I used the hammer and I wrapped it just in some bubble wrap here, uh, just to not damage the frame. And was very, very snug to get this on, but that's exactly what we want. We want this to be a nice, nice, tight clearance fit. And once that's all on there, we can level, make sure everything is nice and straight. And there is our finished product. This diffuser mount on the client's wall. They were super happy with the result, and so was I. Stay tuned for next week where we do the rest of this build. All kinds of acoustic panels. We used EcoFelt on the ceiling of their recording booth. Lots of cool stuff coming. Thank you so much for watching. I really, really appreciate it. This is Daniel from Sound Headquarters. Peace out.